Welcome back. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Um, today I am down here in front of this double-ended ram because I am going to show you how I did all the linkage and the hydraulic plumbing for this double-ended ram. And for those who haven't done any of this type of steering work before, uh, traditionally a vehicle has a steering wheel connected by a shaft to a steering box, which then goes down and connects to your front end steering linkage. When you go to a full hydraulic double-ended ram, you no longer have that mechanical connection anymore. This is 100% hydraulic. Uh, good and bad on those. The good is they're really strong. The bad is they don't have very good road manners. They don't return to center like a steering box would. So if you're gonna run a double-ended ram, it's really not a, a on-road use at that point. This particular buggy, they already had built the mount and they had installed the double-ended ram. Now I'm doing the plumbing, I'm doing all the linkage. And the trick on this one is I'm not just doing this on the front end, I'm doing it on the back too. This is a front and rear steer vehicle. So a couple things real quick on full hydraulic steering. One, which I know a lot of people have a huge concern when they get ready to go from a mechanical steering box with a, a hydraulic assist, for instance, to a full hydraulic steering on these uh, buggy type applications. Uh, the big fear was if I lose engine power, I have no steering. That is incorrect. Uh, even with the engine off, there is what I call a flutter valve inside that orbital control valve. And if you turn it, whatever direction you want to go, that valve actually pushes and allows fluid to go that direction. It is not quick, it is not easy, it is not fast responsive, but it will turn, you can get it off a trail. I have done this live myself when I had an engine die on a trail, got pulled off, I still had steering. Now, if you lose hydraulic fluid, like you rupture a line, then you will lose your steering ability and you're sitting there in a, a sled basically because you have no control over where your wheels are pointing at that point. So there are some advantages and disadvantages uh, to having full hydraulics. The advantage is, is they can move a lot of force and that's why we're using them on these buggies. Now, the flow for this hydraulic system, uh, you start with the reservoir that reservoir feeds not the front orbital, but the joystick control valve first. If you're using the joystick for the rear, you generally can't use your steering for the front. Now, you can if there's no real load under it because it doesn't take a lot of pressure. But if you're under extreme load conditions, generally it's one or the other. Your front steering or rear steering is going to use the pressure from that hydraulic pump. Once it leaves that control valve for the rear steer, then it goes to the orbital control valve for the front steering. Now, if you're not using your rear steer joystick, it just bypasses it. It's just a flow through system. Your front orbital will give you your left and right, pushing fluid one direction, then the other, and retrieving that fluid from the uh, cylinder, et cetera. It works just like a tractor. As a matter of fact, the orbital control valve on my black Jeep came off of a 5,000 pound Clark forklift. So it is the same thing as that. Uh, and it works just fine. It's worked fine for, God, 10 years now. So Now, if you do wanna do full isolated uh, steering for your front and rear without them sharing that pump, you can mount two separate pumps and run isolated systems. You can also run an electric pump for the rear with its own reservoir and system there. Most people don't do that. Most people that are running these buggies, the one pump will suffice because when you're under extreme loads, you're going almost no miles an hour anyway. And you're, you're working a system getting out of a, a, a rock crawling obstacle. So you generally don't need both at the same time, but it's doable if you did want to do that. This particular buggy, we're using one high volume pump, one cooler, 
a rear control valve joystick, a front orbital control valve, two double-ended steering rams, one on each axle. So here's how that all went together. First thing you need is a place to mount a steering ram. In this case, I am using a double-ended three-inch uh, ram with nine inches of throw. That means these will go in and out nine inches. On this particular one, we're using a clevis with spacers. That means I will get the ability to have some articulation. I've got a high steer arm on my knuckle. Now these knuckles are a reed knuckle, but they are based on a Chevrolet style knuckle. So they'll have the original tie rod piece here. Now what I'm doing is I'm running a piece of DOM tube here. I'm running those same eccentric washers here, I'm running my heim joint, another eccentric washer there. And then I go all the way through with my uh, bolt. That's called double shear. Now, if it lines up better, I would have just put them up here, but it didn't seem to really line up any better there. So if I have a choice, I'll put it in double shear. That will uh, increase the strength. Next thing you got to do is you got to figure your center point. Now, I drew this line here, and this is the center of the axle, not the center of this, not the center of the mount, the center of the axle. I've got these angles mounted on my hubs so I can check my toe in. So what I am doing is I measured equal distance from here to this one and center to this one and those are equal at the same time my front and rear when I measure across are the same so I'm 72 and a quarter inches on the front 72 and a quarter on the back um, I am centered from my angle to the center of the axle on both sides then I take a measurement from here to here now Keep in mind, this steering ram was mounted one inch offset. So this side tie rod is actually gonna be an inch longer than this side. But I want it equal throw here to here at my zero toe end. That will allow it to turn left and right equally both directions. Once you have a measurement, cut some tube pieces of uh, bung will get caught up on little wafers of metal if you don't knock them off. We'll take that off the ground. It's inside you want real smooth. Put a little bit of a chamfer on it. More places for my weld to go. I will also be drilling holes through this so that I can rose weld it too. Now you can see I've placed my piece of DOM in there. These are seated on both sides. Now, before I do any welding, I want to remeasure everything because once you weld them, it's really hard to unweld these. Uh, you would have to buy new bungs. So now I'm going to double check with the tape measure. Make sure everything is centered and your toe is set to zero or very close. Um, I'm going to tack both sides in and then we'll burn her in.
There you can see the rosebud and the welds. Uh, these won't fall off, I assure you that. Another little piece of geometry I'd like to point out is you can see how the link kind of angles back towards the center and instead of being straight. I don't know why, but it seems to work better on these and they have less jamage and they seem to steer better if they're kicked forward a little bit. That way when this knuckle is turned all the way out, it's actually straight there. Just geometry that seems to work. Install these tie rods now that they're painted, lock them in. And then I have set my toe in to zero, actually just a hair towed out because this is a full time, it wants to pull them in. So it's almost at zero, just to a skosh of toe out. Tighten up my counter lock nuts here. I'll put the nuts and bolts washers on that and then I will trim the threads off the bottom. I'm gonna start working on some steering arms here. First problem with this picture is it's covered in rust because it was sitting outside. Second problem with this, there ain't no hole there and last I heard you cannot Bluetooth steering. So gotta pull these off and drill some three quarter inch holes. I must say these are really good arms. They're keyed, they're thick, Probably really good steel. We're going to see how they drill now. Once you have a pilot hole, you can throw some oil in it and it'll lubricate almost all the way through then because it'll, it'll run down. Little wire wheel got the big chunks of rust off, cleaned it up. Uh, these are crane arms. Just a little side note when you're boring three, three quarter inch holes and you get to those bigger bits, you have to go real slow because even though you're taking off just the next layer out, it's a lot of surface area. So save yourself a lot of money on bits, go nice and slow, use lots of oil. And the same thing on the rear. Center it with the axle. Set your toe, figure out how long each of your links need to be. Cut them, weld them, paint them, installed. Done. Real quick, I'm gonna show you the components in this. This is the steering reservoir. Uh, this is the cooler. Valve or orbital valve. Figure out the direction and how clean you can run the lines. It makes a big difference. First thing I have to do on this is build a mount for the fluid reservoir. And you want to mount these above the rest of your fluid holding components. Welded that muffler clamp in there. This bolts to the fluid reservoir. My panel will clear it. And it kind of gives me room over here still to run lines. Actually gets pretty tight getting all these bolts. The orbital valve was already mounted in this chassis, but now I need to start running lines from the pumps, reservoirs, and cylinders. I'm trying to fit these as tight as I can and still giving them all the travel they need. It's handy to have a vise. Then you can move around the shop. That way I don't have to take the whole line out. 
to build this end. is seated. I've had pretty good luck with these hoses, but you really got to make sure you do them right. Part of that is throw a little silicone on there, help some thread in. I guess it was the right wrench on the other one, but this fitting is different. Seated. If you put your hand on the large nut, you can actually feel heat generated, and that'll hold. And of course, since nothing else has been correct on this buggy, this side is for the transmission cooler, this side is for the power steering. I had to switch them around. Now, my fittings are located in the right place. I can get them to my reservoir. I'm gonna talk plumbing here for a couple minutes. This is a low pressure return. Now this are, these are the fittings and such that he provided me. I personally try to stay a little more consistent with color, but it's not a big deal. Uh, this is the low pressure side, just from the cooler back to the reservoir. So I've got my fittings pushed in all the way to where they're seated against the little protector. I leave the hose clamps loose and I will tighten those where they are more easily accessible. And the reason I'm doing that is, now if you've ever built a show car, you don't want to see the head of a clamp or something like that. You try to make it even cleaner than normal. But on something like a rock crawler where you might have to do some field work to it, you want to be able to access things like hose clamps. So I am going to make sure I can access that. Now, all my fittings that I put on, my steering and such at this point are going to be hand tight only. Uh, generally, when I'm doing this, I will have to reroute the lines three or four times to get them specifically where I want them so they don't rub on anything. Now you can see, I've got my return line plumbed in. Now the return to the reservoir comes in from the top of the cooler. The lower port, which is right here, will come in from the control valves. Uh, that's just how they recommend doing that. Oops. I don't like zip ties because if they break, your hoses are flopping around. Um, and I don't really like doing permanent tabs on these because then you can't adjust them as smoothly and easily. Now these hoses run up through this little V-notch here and I'm gonna run a little guide tube in there so the hoses have something smooth to rub against. And then, they come up here into my control valve. Now, everything is, just so you know, loose right now. And one of the real positives on these type of fittings, I run all my lines in the, I kind of err on the long side. And if I can't really route them right in being long, I can disassemble these fittings, shorten it, reassemble the fittings. You can really fine tune the hose length with these kind of lines if you want. Okay, the two hoses are gonna come up here. So I decided to build a little guide. I just took a piece of tube and squashed it, rounded the uh, edges on, and I will weld this right down here, and it'll act as, a, as like a 
guide like a fishing pole would have, and it'll allow the hoses to slide up and down if it gets to a point where it is overstretching. I can finish cleaning this up once I get my hose clamps. Ah, this is one of those things I'm kind of winging it because I've never installed one of these rear valves before. So Now I cut this plate so I can run it at an angle. Now we'll see what we do here. All right, so I got my hole drilled. I bolted the valve to a piece of metal. I set it at a pretty steep angle because I wanted the unit to be straight and I needed to clearance everything down below. So down below, you see I've got the valve controller. My lines will come out here, one here and one here. And uh, now let's finish fabbing this bracket in. All right, a little warm there. I still absolutely think this steelit paint is garbage. It burns up just as bad as other paints, and I can burn through those too. But there's enough paint just to really screw up the looks of a weld. Um, but my bracket's in. It looks like it'll work. Got the hydraulic lines tied down. I put wrap on them where I think they're gonna rub uh, or rub enough to do anything. Same thing in the back here. You can see I've got telescoping there, telescoping there, and then tied to the control arm. Now I'm using these little tabs. Most guys will just clamp them down. I'm not a big zip tie guy unless I have to. So that's how I do it but we are pretty much all done with the hydraulic steering on this. Everything is in. I will still have to do wiring for the fans, etc. In, re in real life, this buggy is now together. Uh, in the video life, uh, I have not got it running yet, but for the sake of showing you the rear steer, I wanted to fire this up and show you the rear steer. Got a few things to make it his own buggy and now he's dog tracking because it you can rear steer it all over the place well that's gonna do it for my first uh, rear steer installation attempt uh, it actually came out pretty good uh, there's a lot of different things you can do on these rear steers you can put self-centering units in so that the rear re-centers itself uh, you can use electronic joysticks instead of uh, the manual like I used in this one. There's goods and bads on all of those. And like I mentioned earlier, you can run multiple pumps and systems so that you can run them both fully independent at the same time. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do on my own buggy at this point, but uh, 
doing one successfully, I'm gonna definitely take what works to my buggy and see how that comes out. So again, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. A little four wheeling now. Uh, 35 degrees out in the winter. I should be working in the shop, but we're going four wheeling today. Mostly because we've got a pair of JK or a JK and an XJ without lockers on 35s that are challenging to do this trail. So the entertainment will be. This is the focus here. No lockers, fillings. As they say, let the entertainment begin. Uh -huh. Oh, don't worry, Emma, we're getting it. Straighten it out. Straighten it out. All right, if you're through the gatekeeper, you theoretically can do the entire trail. Gatekeeper? Yep. And then you got two turkeys to fix it. Stay driver. There you go. Right there. Now just come straight. Passenger a little bit. Now, hard, hard passenger.
so far so good with no lockers. Yeah. and they're gonna probably come up somewhere over here. More passenger, see if it climbs up that way. Nice job, Justin. Nice job. Little Moab bump. <laughs> now, driver. Hard driver. You're fine. <laughs> you're gonna want to turn into it a little bit as you're coming forward so drive her now you want to keep the back tire up on that leg there you go a little more and then it'll drop and then it gets icky Yeah, he's got to stay on that wall. Easy. He can come this way now. Okay, now start coming this way. As you're moving, you can keep coming. Now just, just stay nice. Hard passenger and just keep driving. Okay. 
It'll, even if it slides, it'll slide. You're okay. Just let let it slide all the way over, and it'll calm down. Nothing shape business. Great line, as they say, until it wasn't. And it wasn't. <laughs> this has my doors caving in written all over it. Right there. Bad ideas create good ideas. <laughs> All right, way out of this without turning around. Um, back up a little further. I'm going to have to really sit up here, though. Yeah, come, come forward about two feet and then hard passenger and back up. Back up the rock. Yeah, back up it. Yeah, right there. Now you can line up your rear tire and just go. I would. Yeah. Hard, hard passenger. Okay, now, now drive. There you go. Gotta watch that side, though. That side's fine.
Sliders are tough on this thing. It was it it, it, it bird nested. Save the door, save the body. Nice, nice. Let Anthony get up here so he can pull him out. <laughs> Just kidding. It's kind of like Brian's line. Uh. Keep it passenger though. Keep it passenger. Okay, now you can start straightening out. You're good. Come on up. Once you're up, start turning driver. Driver. Nicely done. Go real slow. If you can climb the front, it'll pull it up, but otherwise it'll sink. No, that's okay. It'll it'll go. Just go forward. You're fine. Yeah. 
little little passenger if it'll take it, but. Close. Perfect. Nice. that one now at the next rock Okay, you already know where you're going. So, just work that plan. Nice, you're, you're, you're on the right, right line. Next rock, remember where you're going. You're right on it. Keep going, you're doing a great job there. Nice line. Nice, nice, nice. No. Keep your back tire on that flat rock right there.
stay up high. There you go, right there. That looks really good, at least on this side. Send it right now. Go. Okay. Come on forward. Come on forward. You're good. You really are. Easy. Um. Turn. Turn uphill. Yeah. Turn into it. Turn uphill. I guess they are, and uh, open differentials with no breakage.